Okay, good morning. Uh, welcome to Coffee with the Mayor. It's February 10th of 2023. I appreciate you being here and I'll just run through um, what's going on in the city of Stoughton. I have a new device. Hopefully it works. It helps me advance the slides. So we'll see how my, my tech savvy is this morning. And if there's any questions along the way, just let me know. Um, one of the things I've been talking about is uh, we're looking for more opportunities to reach out and get community members uh, uh, involved and educated on what's going on in the city. And these are some of the ways we're doing it. Um, our TV station, who's here recording today, has several new apps here that you can join in, um, either on your TV or on your phone. Uh, we've been doing a city council catch up. What that is, this is uh, a brief summary of what occurred at city council meeting. So those have been recorded. So you can take a two or three hour meeting and we uh, can condense it down to 15 to 20 minutes for people that are busy. And then we also have been broadcasting our finance committees live so people know where their money are going here in the city of Stoughton. Um, in the last couple weeks uh, since I've been here, we have made uh, more updates to our website. It has a, a new look, a uh, little bit more user friendly. So we'll hope you'll jump on there and get information. And then we have our quarterly newsletter that we put out digitally. So if you want to get our quarterly newsletter, the best way to see that is uh, either on our website or you can uh, become a follower on our, our Facebook social media account. Um, this is one of the projects that are going to be starting in 2025, but we're currently uh, working with the DOT on the different segments of the corridor project. Um, in Stoughton, they're going to start down here, and this is between Spring Street, Spring Road and Fifth Street. Um, that work is scheduled to be done in 2025, and you can see the color-coded or the different segments to this highway corridor project, which will go basically all the way from Coachman's all the way uh, to McFarland and a lot of the enhancements that are going to be made are for public safety that involve uh, turn lanes with medians trying to improve the, the site and the vision. Um, in our area that we control we're uh, looking at slowing down traffic uh, to make it safer as well as some roundabouts that will be going in. So in 2026 we're scheduled to put in two more roundabouts, one at Rutland Dunn Road where all the new um, construction is going on out there, and then one at Highway, um, Highway, Highway B, Rutland Dunn is down here, Highway B. And then um, one of the things that has changed, um, I believe since we talked last, is the Highway AB intersection here was originally going to be part of this corridor project in 2026. What the DOT did is they shifted that from the corridor project to what they call a safety committee. And the safety committee recommended and programmed to have this work done in 2024 in Highway AB, which is a terrible intersection. I think many of you have probably been, you know, in that particular area where you're trying to take a turn and cars are passing and coming up fast from behind. So we're excited that they're going to move that project up. And then this is kind of a work in process right now. The uh, DOT is, is doing the designing um, anticipation of the dates that are listed here for the different segments. The funding could change, so some of these areas could get moved up a year or two, so they're trying to get the design done now. So if the funding were to become available, um, they can do those projects earlier than later. Here's some development we have out on 51 West uh, currently. Uh, we have the apartment complex that's going up out here. Um, so they're making good progress. They, they were putting shingles on the roof the other day. There's some duplexes here that are under construction, uh, a total of five duplexes. And then uh, some of the infrastructure work on the other side has been completed. Uh, we will be redoing the road um, that kind of helps serve this uh, by stone lumber that will lead up to oak opening. Um, in the spring, so things are moving along pretty well there. And then this is a picture of the apartments that are going up. Right now there's about uh, 80 units there, and they're uh, going to be at the plan commission meeting next week to talk about a second building that they'd like to put up out there as well. So this is the uh, 
location of the first building here, Highway 51 would be up there, and then the second building would go here between uh, Nygaard Street, and, and there's parking that's shown there as well. So um, that'll be about the same number of units. I think there's 70 some in that one. Um, we know that uh, affordable and attainable housing and housing in general is really, uh, has a shortage here in Dane County. Um, there is a team working on housing strategies to try to help address that issue. But it looks like we're certainly gonna get our share of buildings done here in the next several years. This is kind of an aerial view, so you can see this is where the, the apartment's going up. The second one will go up in this area here. The duplexes are uh, right in here. And this is gonna be the park area. And if you've been out there, we have a really nice trail system that goes here all the way to Virgin Lake down this way. And we'll ultimately connect to this property here, which was recently purchased by Stone Trailers. Is there any interest in, in realtors putting up more condos in Stoughton? Uh, I think there's always interest if they feel that um, there's a market for it, if they can make money and sell them. The challenge with the condos has been since the recession, a lot of the financial institutions really want to see some of the condos uh, prepaid. So what we're seeing quite a few of is where a developer will build a duplex, they'll rent them out, they'll eventually sell one of them and then they can get financing and then sell the other one and turn them into condos. Um, so they do it in a transition. During the recession, what happened is, is there was a lot of condos that were built really throughout Dane County, the state, and even nationally that just didn't sell because people stopped buying homes and they ended up renting many of those condos out and then selling them later when the uh, when the market changed. An example of that would be at Macomb Plaza. Um, there's condos there, a lot of those were rented out because they couldn't get them sold. And then the other ones were the ones uh, over off Hamilton Street. Um, those were condos that were built that most of those were rented out and they're still working on selling them as well. But the, the financial institutes feel that the condos are higher risk than maybe a single family home or a duplex because there's more units. And when they're doing the financing, um, the renting, they typically assume that there's gonna be a 70% occupancy rate. When you do that for condos, the numbers just don't come out and the banks don't wanna loan them the money. So they like to have a certain number of those units sold before they even build it. So it's really challenging for developers to secure a loan. And do you have more, uh, what they're considering or what you've talked about is being first time home buyers. There's kind of out of the price range where a lot of people are buying homes in Rock County that they can afford. Yeah, it's definitely a challenge and I can talk about that when we get to uh, a couple of the slides. So what we're seeing that is, especially in Dane County, is we're seeing a lot more apartments and they're expensive too. Um, and, but the people can, you know, for an apartment you need you know, you need a security deposit, you don't need a down payment. So for some people, a down payment just isn't really doable, but a security deposit is. So they're, they're renting instead of getting a first time home. Um, and there's some strategies that, you know, we're trying to work with to try to improve that market. And what we're seeing even with apartments right now, and, and people had this with their homes, is um, with the single family home, you know, it became a bidding war here before the interest rates went up. You know, realtors were telling me they get 30 or 50 offers on a house. And what that did is it drove up the price. So, you know, the price went up and then when the started having the material shortage and the labor issues, then the prices went up or stayed up there and they haven't really come back down yet. Um, there's been a little bit of slowdown in new construction here in the last quarter last year. Uh, because of the interest rates, so that might help, help bring some of the home prices back down. Probably not where they were, but at least flatten out the curve. And the same thing with apartments is what I've experienced due to the shortage of apartments. We've had leases, leases that have come up and people want to renew their leases and the landlord says, well, you're going to have to pay an extra two to $300 more a month. 
Otherwise, I'm going to rent it out to somebody else because they have a waiting list. So by building more apartments, hopefully that will help make things more affordable uh, for everybody. So this is a, a concept plan for stone trailers. As I mentioned before, that's this land up here. And what they would like to do is uh, somewhere in this area put their corporate headquarters. And there's a total of 182 acres here all together. And they're going to be at the Planning Commission on Monday night and the City Council at Tuesday night. What we have to do here is Years ago, when um, Walmart first wanted to build the super center, they were going to build it at this location. So, what we have here in the city is every 10 years we have to do a comprehensive plan for land use. So, we have to project out where we're going to grow and what potentially we'd go there. We did that 20 years ago, um, and then when Walmart was going to build here, they did what they call a detailed neighborhood plan. So they made a plan for this site, which never happened because the Walmart was never built. So one of the steps in the process for Stoughton Trailers is we need to amend the comprehensive plan. So I think the strategy is going to be to basically eliminate the plan that was designed for Walmart and go back to the original comprehensive plan and amend that. We, we believe that will be less complicated than trying to amend the plan that Walmart put together because all the roads changed, the, the uh, stormwater standards have raised. They used to design these developments for a 50 or 100 year flood. Now we're designing them for a 200 year flood. So that's why you see all these ponds on there because we have to be able to control the stormwater um, so we don't flood the other homes that are currently within the Stoughton area. So with all the standards that have changed, um, so will the, so will the comprehensive plan will have to be changed as well. So part of that requires public hearings, and what the Stoughton Trailers will be doing is they'll be uh, introducing what we call a public, public participation plan to kind of outline the different ways that people can provide input on what they'd like to see out in this development. Um, as is proposed right now, um, this is where their headquarters would be. The blue is the stormwater. The green are what they call the dry basins that help control the stormwater as well. And then there's a natural wetland in here that we can't disturb and we have to build so far away from it we can't come up to the edge. I think it's got to be like 75 feet from the edges if I remember right. And then the red would be commercial properties as well as their headquarters here and then they would plan on doing some housing kind of around here. Sand Hill School is here, the church is here, so the new houses all the way to here is kind of the initial thought. This is really at its early stages so it's really fluid right now. There's all sorts of approvals that would need to be uh, have to occur not only with us but with the DOT for this intersection. We had a meeting with them earlier in the week. We still have to meet with the county to see whether or not you know, these connections are allowable or what they might look like, but this is just a basic plan. So it takes quite a bit of time and effort working with the developers, the engineers, in order to get these things approved ultimately by the Planning Commission and the City Council. This is uh, Kettle Park West. Uh, this is all kind of Walmart's down here. And right now, they're working up in this area here, and there's about a dozen homes that are under construction. Um, one of the things they're proposing is um, there's a hotel out there, and behind the hotel, um, they're going to be at the Planning Commission Monday night, and they're proposing to put up a couple of apartments behind the hotel. Initially, they had hoped to be able to put up a convention center there. Um, right now, the market really um, isn't supporting that, so they're, look, they're looking at another option here. So that's something the Planning Commission will get their first look at that Monday night. And this is kind of what the apartment would look like. So this is the uh, this is the area here, and then <coughs> these are examples of ones that they built in Verona. So I don't know if they'll be exactly the same, but it kind of gives you an idea of what they could look like. 
that process would involve, you know, rezoning and things like that that require a public hearing. So uh, people would have an opportunity to voice their concerns or ask any questions that they may have at that meeting. Um, the other thing we have going on out there is the Sherwin Williams and Emilio's opened recently, and um, they're the Madhouse Smoke Shop. They have a few locations in Dane County. They're going to be at the Planning Commission on Monday night as well um, to hopefully for them get that approved uh, for, for their business that they want to put there. This is an example of one of the 12 homes that are being built out there right now. Um, they purchased initially 28 lots and they pulled 12 permits and I think they're digging the last two foundations here in the last week. So they're, they're moving along. We hope the interest rates will flatten out so they can continue to build out there. All together there's probably about 200 lots available. This here is the area of, uh, this is called Magnolia Springs. This is south of town. So as you're coming past the library, you come down South Page Street, um, down this way, and South Page would be extended into this development. I should say the library is over here. Fourth Street comes here, South Page would come be extended, and then there would be a connection that goes through there. These homes here, um, the, the light yellow ones are single families, and then the, the orange ones are duplexes. We think these smaller lots and the duplexes will be whatever affordable is at that point in time. We like to call them attainable, which means that you know people will find a way in order to get a down payment and get into these homes. Probably be priced, I don't know, three fifty to four hundred thousand. It really depends on what's going on with materials and labor here in the spring. There's a few things we're trying to do to provide down payment assistance. And that's something that I'm, I'm working on now uh, with some of the financial institutions to figure out a way if there's a city and possibly the employers to partner to offer people some money that they could use for down payment assistance and then when they refinance or sell their homes they could pay it back later and then somebody else could use it for a future home. So we're trying to put some programs together like that to at least get people in a position where they might be able to secure a loan to, to purchase a new home or for people that want to maybe downsize maybe they're in a bigger home now they can move into one of these and free up some more inventory on another uh, area of town not exactly sure what all these are going to look like uh, but i've been told um, similar to some of the homes uh, some of the duplexes on 51 west some of the duplexes might be zero entry which means there's no basement so for active seniors, those work out really nice. Mm -hmm. You can have your, your laundry room or your mud room on the first floor. You don't have to worry about steps, things like that. So that's one of the other things that the developer can do to try to help uh, keep the cost down. It's not to put a basement in. So they're still in the process of doing their due diligence as far as what it will cost to put in the infrastructure, the roads, the sewer, um, as well as uh, putting in uh, homes either with or without basements. Over on the east side, um, this is uh, this area over here is kind of off a of racetrack road. A lot of these roads mm -hmm. right now dead end. And the idea would be to extend them roads running parallel with Highway A and then focus on this triangle piece as the first phase here. And this is an area where they'd like to be able to put condos in here. So we're hoping that that will occur. And once again, they're still doing their due diligence as far as sewer, water, wastewater, uh, infrastructure costs, as well as roads and sidewalks, and whether or not, you know, they can build this first phase and create enough cash in order to pay for the, the necessary infrastructure to serve the properties. And then eventually, once this section would be completed, they would start working to the north, and ultimately, um, someday where the Stone Airport is, um, that would be developed as well. It's actually, these two lots here could be uh, commercial lots right off of Highway 51, which I think would be pretty desirable for the east side. I know the east side is starving for more amenities, so hopefully this will put us in a position where we can we can accommodate that. Um, this is the quick trip proposal. They were here a couple years ago. 
Um, they would still like to build a new store on the east side. Uh, this is a fast small building here. And uh, what they would like to do is put their quick trip building here, the car wash would be kind of in the back here, and then the pumps are here. And the challenges would be is if you're familiar with the site, right now this is Highway N. This driveway here is also known as an easement, which is shared by this property and then this property here. So the challenge has been is to be able to use this easement for the quick trip. And the, the Dane County is saying, well, if they're going to put a quick trip here, we want to change this entrance here to a right turn in or a right turn out. They don't want left turns coming across traffic there, which means if you're leaving the quick trip, you're going to have to get out a different way. And if you're coming in, it gets pretty congested right now when you come into easement. You come here, and it's really tight right in here. So what we proposed was uh, to help serve this property is to create another easement here, so if you're coming into this building here, you would come in here, come down, and you go in, and you'd avoid all the quick trip traffic. And then if you're going to quick trip, you could come in, you can park here, you go here, you can go to the pumps, and then when you leave, you could go up here to Cedarbrook and go out that way, so then you could take your left there if you wanted to, or you could go out and take a right. Um, same thing when you're coming in, you can come in this way too. And where this is kind of becoming more important here lately is we've learned that throughout our conversations here that four days a week fast and all has a semi that comes into their building for delivery. And in the past, they've come into easement, they pull down here, they back their truck into here and there's an overhead door. I worked there for eight years, that's what they always did. Well, we learned recently that they used to have a 48-foot truck, but they needed a larger truck, so now they're doing a 53-foot truck. The 53-foot truck cannot make the corner here to back in here. So what they're doing is they're pulling up here and then they're backing in from Highway N, which is a dangerous situation. So we just became aware of that, and we're hoping that if if this gets approved, they can come in here, and that will help, you know, they can come in here and then back in, and that will provide a solution for them, because what we have right now is really not acceptable. So, this will be at the Planning Commission Monday night too, so it's gonna be a long night. Um, I know in the past there's been some concerns <coughs> from the neighbors about traffic, speed, pedestrian safety, gas fumes, pretty much everything. Um, we'll see how it goes. Um, you know, what we try to do is work with them to make some improvements to get to the point where it could be considered. Ultimately, the Planning Commission will have to make a decision in the City Council and we'll see where it goes. Uh, Emmy Roth, this is the cheese factory up uh, near the business park. Um, since I took the picture, a lot of this is starting to be closed in on the warehouse and they're starting to work on their, uh, their office space there for their uh, regional headquarters. Uh, you might have heard that the Soton Garden Center um, closed and then they're uh, leasing to Jung's and they're expected to open, open in the spring. And we're hoping that eventually, if, if things work out, that they'll purchase the building. Stoughton Health, um, they're working on an addition. Um, Dan was here uh, last month, we talked a little bit about it. And we had a couple questions um, as far as the homes. And I've been assured that once this addition is completed, they really don't have any additional homes uh, being removed on their radar. Um, a lot of the homes, in order to accommodate the space, have been moved or are demoed the last several years. And, uh, you know, they're really committed to this campus and they're trying to expand their services and, and keep as much business here local as we can. So, um, it's a big project and, you know, you'll be hearing more about that as well. Um, this is a building that used to be an auto parts store. This one was recently sold. I believe they're going to sell cars there when it's all said and done with. 
Uh, right now, they just have it boarded up. This is up on Main Street. Did they clean up the gasoline and oil spills and stuff that were there? That, which that side? was Larry Roberts' shop. I would imagine that if once they start construction, if the DNR will require them to do soil testing. Same thing, if the quick trip gets approved and they decide to close the current site down there, there's a whole process that they have to go through to pull out the tanks and do remediations and make sure that there's testing that goes on periodically. Um, this is a senior center, of course. This is where we are today. And then this, this annex here, for many years, uh, we rented it out to local businesses. We were able to relo relocate all those businesses and uh, help them secure uh, money that was available through the state um, from uh, COVID money, basically. It was like $10,000. We helped them uh, secure grants for their relocation costs. Um, so I've been told that starting today, I don't know if they're over there, that they're going to start doing the demoing on the inside of the building in order to be able to expand the space there so the senior center can offer more programs. So we're really excited about that. I know Cindy is, but it's certainly uh, more work for her to do. But our, uh, <coughs> we were able to get some nice bids from a local contractor, and our planning department has helped coordinate that. Uh, we had been storing some furniture in here for the resettlement groups um, as they transition people um, into Stoughton, and we're, we're happy we were able to do that. And, uh, all that equipment has been removed, so we're, we're ready to go to work on this. So I'm not really sure what the timeline is for completion, but you'll probably hear more about that as we move forward. Um, VITA is a volunteer assistance program that occurs here. And I think they'll be here. Are they here tomorrow? Yep. Yep, they'll be here tomorrow from 9 to 1. Um, they make it pretty easy. You pick up your paperwork, you fill it out, you bring it back. They'll let you know when your stuff is done. Um, I think there's forms here and possibly at the library as well. Um, it's a free service. Um, anybody that would like to uh, take advantage of that service can. Um, there are some limitations, especially you know if your business gets a little bit more complicated. But you know you can bring in your you know come in to get your paperwork, ask a couple questions. They'll let you know whether or not you will qualify. But most people will, so I encourage you to utilize the service. It's a great service that uh, is here and we appreciate the Senior Center being the host. Um, another thing that are going on is our Sustainability Committee has a couple things going on. Um, they're doing a survey and I've been told that uh, a link to the survey is in your utility bill as well as just flyers available throughout the community and you probably saw it on social media if you do that. Uh, we'd really like to get input from uh, people in the community on what they believe the city should do and what the community as a whole should do in the area of sustainability. And then we also have a local sustainable Stoughton group that works with the sustainability committee and they're going to be doing an event on February 18th at the fire station. And it basically is planting your pollinator which is like prairie grasses to help encourage um, you know bees and butterflies and things like that. So it's a free event. Um, you're welcome to attend, and that'll be at the fire station. Um, elections. Um, right now, we're we have one item on the ballot right now, and that's for uh, Supreme Court. There's four candidates. You can choose one. There's early voting that is uh, occurring right now at City Hall, and then the primary date itself is February 21st. And we encourage you to get out and vote. The Supreme Court has, has become an even more important position here the last few years. There have been a lot of split votes at that level. So we encourage you to get out and, and, and vote. And then uh, the, the top two candidates for this will be on for the, uh, for the April election, as well as some of the local races for school board and city council. I don't know if there's any county races on for the spring or not. Anything in the county in the spring? Okay. All right. The DA. What's that? The DA, the DA may be on. I'm not sure. Okay. 
And that's all I had as far as uh, slides. Did you have any questions today? I know I went through it pretty quickly, but anything on your mind today? Sure. I was going to buy you a beer the other night, but <laughs> you wanted to enjoy yourself. But yes. I got home, the 1030 comedy show. I don't know if you're running, going to run again, but a company, a friend wanted me to move to San Francisco, and a company donated the building and a toilet. And uh, so far on emails and paperwork, they spent $170 million. Uh, sounds like a government thing. So, uh, so far you seem to have accomplished stuff under $170 million. Yeah, we try. I mean, we're limited on what we can do um, on our operational budget because that's based on our property taxes and our growth. That's why it's important that we do these projects. That gives us more money so we can you know, retain our staff and provide more services to you. And then the other part of that is the borrowing. And we try to be really consistent on how much we borrow every year because the borrowing is the one area that we can spend more or less that affects your mill rate. We can't really control your home values other than to try to get more homes to keep the prices down. Uh, but the assessor is, is hired as a third party to do your assessment. And if you're like me, your, your property value went up quite a bit here the last couple of years. So even though my mill rate went down quite a bit, my property taxes still went up. Um, some people saw a drop in their taxes. So what we try to do is we try to keep the mill rate balanced and, and, and try to, you know, make strategic decisions based on, you know, information. We bid things out. If we don't get a good bid, if we can, we delay the project till the following year and maybe try to consolidate two projects together in order to get a better bid. So there's all th sorts of strategies that we use to try to protect your money. Any other questions? We also have Mike Engelberger here from Dane County. If you have any questions for the county, we work really closely with the county <coughs> on issues, um, all sorts of issues. Our police departments work together quite a bit. Uh, the county provides a lot of the funding and the human services budget, funding that supports the senior center. So we appreciate that. Um, you know, they, they're, they're working on um, implementing their budget items. Um, I don't know if you want to talk about a couple of your issues while you're here. Come on up. Well, I, I don't want to say too much. Um, I'm trying to get uh, our new sheriff, Calvin Barrett, to come in and uh, do a little presentation here for one of these. And we're probably going to try to do that in the next month or two. And then I'll do a little presentation at the time also. But uh, just a little, some basic information. I, I'm on the Dane County Board. Uh, District 35, which covers Stoughton, portions of Dunkirk, and portions of Pleasant Spring. And uh, I was elected in April. Um, I'm on every, all of the county board members. There's 37 county board members, so it's a big board. And uh, people ask, how can you get anything done? Well, it's, it's a pretty efficient process. Uh, they've been doing it for years and years. And we have a good county executive, Joe Parisi. Yeah. But uh, everybody, all of the uh, board members are on have one standing committee, and I'm on the Public Works and Transportation Committee, and that covers a lot of uh, different things throughout the county, including the parks, highways, uh, the zoo, the Lion Energy Center, um, the uh, the uh, the dump up in. Uh, you know, the, the refuse, uh, oh, the landfill. <laughs> yeah, the landfill, uh, which they're actually going to try to, going to have to expand in the next uh, 10 years or so. Um, so it, it covers a lot of, a lot of uh, different things that we deal with. I deal with a lot of uh, renewable energy type uh, things, um, environmental issues, such as uh, runoff from the farmland into lakes and waters. I'm also on the Land, uh, land Conservation Committee, uh, the, the UW Extension Committee, which is kind of the Ag Committee, which uh, deals with education for farmers and those types of things. 
So that's kind of what I what I focus on. Uh, in addition to that, there's a lot of other things that the county does, such as uh, health and human needs. That's the biggest portion of our budget, and uh, Cindy is involved in, in helping helping people with the seniors, and it also covers homeless issues, um, housing issues, all kinds of different things for um, to help people uh, get off their feet. And uh, so that's kind of just a little summary of kind of what I do, and I'll try to expand on that a little bit when I do my presentation when we try to get Calvin in here also. And Mike has served on the city council, so he's really in touch with, with Stoughton and the issues that we have here. Go ahead. Uh, Mike, uh, I thought last summer they were supposed to start pumping the sludge out of the river between the dam and County B and I didn't see any actual yeah. work being done in that regard. Well, right now they're working on the second phase, which is from, I believe it's it's just north of, uh, well, actually it's it's from the, the dam, Kiganza Dam, or the Kiganza Locks, right. the outlet to County Trump B. That's the section that they're working on currently. They've done a couple other sections farther upstream. I, 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 saw, I saw them getting ready to yeah. do that work. Yeah. I didn't actually see. Them. <clears throat> I don't think they do a lot of it in the in the winter time. Well, you know, it's yeah. more of a summertime thing. But they they probably do about eight months out of the year on it. Um, the section that they're doing up here uh, is a subcontractor that they contracted out. But um, yeah, they're they're sucking the muck is what they call it, and uh, you know it's it's to help clean up the, the lakes and, and help get the flow so it's better. It's uh, kind of flood mitigation, that type of thing. So it's really a good project. One of the other things I wanted to mention that I um, really that I really push for is with our parks and recreation, our trails and those kinds of things, there's a bike trail that's, that's planned to come down right into Stoughton at some point, and they're, they're working on that um, from, from up near McFarland down to into Lake Kiganza State Park. And uh, so, you know, we've got some really good things that the county does. Um, and uh, I'm just proud to be a part of it. Just back on the topic of sucking the muck, mm -hmm. just out of curiosity, what do they do with the muck? Well, I'll tell you what they do is they, they prepare areas uh, that are like close by. They dig out and then they, they put it in there they, they, they pump it into there and they allow it to dry and it basically just becomes soil. So yeah. well, they just reclaim yeah. it, put yeah. it back And then the they're way. actually removing phosphorus out of the, out of the lakes systems. They, they've removed a lot of it. I, I can't give you the numbers right now, but uh, there's a lot of uh, phosphorus that's been removed. Uh, and it's basically to really help the, the flow. Yeah. And when you do that, it flows better. You have better conditions for the fish, for the wildlife and it reduces flood uh, problems. And uh, so there's a good, good thing all the way around for, Thank you. for these situations. Yeah. yeah, and a couple things that Mike mentioned, he mentioned UW Extension. They're the ones that have been working with our sustainability committee um, in order to put together ultimately a sustainability plan. So they, they helped with the survey that you'll see. So that's a really cost-effective service that the county provides, um, you know, to us. If we were to hire a consultant to do something like that, it would probably cost another twenty or thirty thousand dollars, and we're being charged for their work. So it's really good, and it, it's good for the program and the people that do it as well. And they've done other projects here in, in the city over the years. Um, you mentioned the seniors. One of the things they do is they. You know, provide you know the funding and mechanisms for Meals on Wheels, um, and right now we're kind of in a transition. Uh, the caterer that they had didn't work out. The county's working on getting a new caterer, but fortunately for us, we have our own commercial kitchen here. So the team here has just done an excellent job of kind of filling the gap here and uh, providing that service where other communities that really don't have their own senior center that can do that are struggling to get meals for the people that need them the most. Um, so that's another program that the county works with us. So it's, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of collaboration here. We also work with our, our state representatives. We'll get them down here at some point. Um, 
they were in Stoughton um, last week. They were meeting with the school districts. We talked to them on a regular basis about issues that affect us here locally that are statewide decisions, particularly uh, when it comes to budgets and funding. So the governor rolled out his budget a couple weeks ago during the state of the state. And then we work with our local uh, legislators to provide our feedback on how things that are included or not included in the governor's budget affect us here in Stoughton. Uh, usually it comes down to money. Uh, we're, we're advocating for what we call more shared revenue. Um, much like the school districts over the last decade, um, the funding and support we receive from the state has been reduced, um, which is help to lower property taxes, but it's also put us in a position where we have to borrow money for things we should just pay cash for. So at, at the end of that, when you're paying interest on that money, you're not really saving taxpayers money when you operate that way. And it also, you know, creates challenges in, in providing services um, and, and retaining our staff. So I know the county has had a huge initiative for their staff retention, and so have we. And as we continue to grow, we know we're going to need more staff, particularly in areas like public works. When we have more parks, we have more roads to plow, more potholes to fill. Um, we're going to have more people coming into the senior center. We're going to have uh, more calls for police, fire, and EMS. So really, what we do is we advocate at the county and the state level in order to try to be able to you know, get more share of the money um, that we're helping to generate. We generate the money through uh, sales tax and income tax for the people that work and shop here. That money goes to the county and the state. We're asking for the state to you know, allow us to spend some of that money. Right now they're sitting on a $7 billion surplus. Um, and we'd like to see them reinvest that money for the greater good of not only Stoughton, but all communities here in the state of Wisconsin. I, I can tell you one other thing I'd like to say. I was on the city council for about six years here, and uh, you know, just working with staff within the city, people like Cindy and the other departments, um, they really do a great job. Same with the county. Everybody I've dealt with so far, um, they're really dedicated to the communities, and they want to do the right thing. So, uh, you know, I, I'm proud to be part of it. And, I hope you guys as taxpayers are as well. I mean, they, they really do a great job to try to help uh, help everybody in the community. And the story I always tell with Mike is Mike and I served together on the city council. And Mike helped to get me elected as mayor and then he quit the city council. <laughs> <laughs> My job was done. <laughs> so we like to tell that story and we've had a great working relationship over the years. And if there's anything you need at the county level, feel free to reach out to Mike, or if you see me, just grab me, and I'll be more than happy to pass the information on. We try to be visi visible and active in the community at different events and different places. We see folks around town, and that's really where we, we really learn and understand what the real needs are out here in the community. We try not to just sit in our office every day. We try to get out and do things like this to really understand what's important to people and what we can try to do to address, address our challenges here. So, and having you here, we really appreciate that. Go ahead. What, what road projects do we have to look forward to this summer? Oh, there's a bunch of them, uh, particularly up on Jackson Street and Roby Road are gonna be kind of bigger ones. Um, the good thing about the projects this year, we're not doing a lot of utility work this year. Um, we have in the last couple of years done quite a bit of utility work, especially when we were doing the lead service pipe removal and replacement. And so utilities really needed to, to take a break and get caught up on their finances before they start investing in, in more of their underground work. So uh, between the lead service line work and the work that I showed you that the DOT is going to be doing, the utilities are going to be spending a lot of money on their infrastructure as part of that project as well. So what that means is the projects we're doing this summer, a lot of them are going to be, you know, you grind up the pavement, you put a fresh coat on it, maybe you do spot sidewalks, curbs and gutters, try to improve a few of the trails, maybe widen some of the sidewalks. So there's a number of projects that are being done 
but it's not going to be nearly as disruptive as things have been the last couple years. Uh, many of the projects, you'll still, you know, the local traffic will be able to get through. Um, the detours, if you have to take, you're talking a block or two to get around it. Some of the lanes will be open even during the construction. So there's going to be quite a bit of work done, but it's not going to be as in depth as maybe it was the last couple years where they go down and right down to really the, the dirt and, and put in new utility type stuff. There's a little bit of that going on, but not nearly as much as maybe you've been used to the last several years. You know, and that's one of the things I'm really proud we've been able to do in the last four or five years is to get our roads back in a better condition. What we do is uh, we use a program uh, that we get from the state. The county uses it as well. It's called a, a PACE rating program, and it's a computer software where we have a map of all of our roads here in the city, and then we go out and we rate the quality of the roads. Um, and that helps us to prioritize which roads need to be maintained, which ones need to be replaced, what method of replacement it should be, and we prioritize our projects. We work with Stoughton Utilities to try to make sure that when we're doing a road, they don't come back a year later and then dig it up and put in new utilities. We want to have a coordinated effort and we, we want to do the roads when they need to be done because what I've learned is the longer you put it off, the more it costs you. The more money you're going to have to borrow, the more money you're going to have to pay on that. So you might as well just pull off the band-aid and do the work and get it done with. So that's kind of the strategy that we've taken. I believe in the long run that's a strategy that saves taxpayers money Plus, it's a strategy that provides safer and better roads for people, not only for the motorists, but for the bicyclists and for the pedestrians as well. Any other questions? All right, well, thanks again for being here. We'll try to get a notice out if, if I'm gonna have a guest next month, or Mike said he's working on trying to get the sheriff down here. Um, if he's not available, I'll see if somebody else is, and then we'll get it out on the flyers or up on the reader board or something so people know um, on our social media. We appreciate you being here, and I uh, look forward to seeing you again next month. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.